Ling Portal Online School presents Contemporary Knights in the UK Real Life Heroes. What do you think of when you hear the word knight or lady? Maybe it's a man in shining armor fighting a dragon while riding a horse and rescuing a princess. Or maybe you think of an elegant lady with a beautiful dress and long hair. These knights and ladies remind us of the ancient world. But what about knights and ladies today? What does it mean for someone to be knighted? And what do they have to do every day if they're not going on legendary quests for treasure? You may think that every knight has a sword, a horse and a castle to live in. But as we explore knights in the UK today, the truth will be revealed. Let's figure it out together. Knights of Legend Looking into the past between the 5th and 10th centuries in the early Middle Ages, sometimes known as the Dark Ages, you could become a knight if you had a horse and were a warrior. Pretty simple. However, between the 14th and 16th centuries in the late Middle Ages, knights became a little more complicated. To be a knight, you usually had to be born in a noble family and would be trained carefully in hunting, fighting, looking after horses and even cleaning armour. Knights sometimes acted like bodyguards for lords and they were paid for this with land. They had full plate armour and horses had to act like perfect Christians and have good morals and chivalry as well as going on crusades different orders of knights. But not every knight is the same. To become a knight, you must join an order of knights. There are three orders when you become a knight just for being a member. The Order of the Garter in England, the Order of the Thistle in Scotland and the Order of St. Patrick in Ireland. Although the last one doesn't have any current members. There are also orders where not everyone is a knight, but getting the highest rank in the order will make you a knight. These are the order of the bath. Yes, it's referring to having a bath. It used to be part of the ritual to become a knight. The order of Saint Michael and Saint George, the Royal Victorian Order and the order of the British Empire. The Oldest Knight's Order The Oldest Knight's Order in the UK is the Order of the Garter, which was founded in the 14th century in 1348 by King Edward III. The name of this order is a funny one, because a garter is a band that a woman wears around her leg to keep a stocking or stock from falling down. So why is a knight's order named after a piece of women's clothing? There are many stories about the name. One is that the Countess of Salisbury was dancing at a ball when her garter fell down and the men around her made fun of her. However, King Edward picked up the garter, gave it back to the Countess and told off the men for laughing, saying, shame on him who thinks evil of it, which became the order's motto. Another story is that King Edward III was inspired by King Richard I for the name. King Richard I was fighting in the Crusades when he decided to make all of his knights tie garters around their legs. They then won the battle. To become a member of the order at first, you must have to be nominated by someone who was already a member and then the monarch would choose from these nominations. However, from 1860, there were no nominations and the monarch would choose whoever they wanted to be in the order, with the advice of the government. Then, in 1946, it was decided that the government's advice was not needed. So today, the monarchy can choose whoever they want to be in the order, as long as there aren't more than 24 people in the order. The oldest, founded in the 14th century, is the Order of the Garter, started in 1348. This is the highest order of chivalry in Great Britain and according to the charter, there can be no more than 24 people in it, whom the monarch personally elects without consulting anyone. However, there can be extra members, 
known as the supernumerary members. And these can even include the monarchs of other countries. King George III created this idea of extra members in 1786 because he had too many sons and didn't want them to take up all the spaces in the order. Some foreign members of the Order of the Garter have included Emperor Alexander I of Russia in 1814, Emperor Napoleon III of France in 1855, Emperor Wilhelm II of Germany in 1888, removed in 1915 due to World War I. Emperor Franz Joseph, Austria, 1867, removed in 1915 due to World War I. Emperor Hirohito of Japan in 1929, removed in 1941 due to World War II, joined again in 1971. Who can appoint knights? Today, knights can be appointed by different people, depending on the order they are joining. Most commonly, people are awarded knighthoods by the monarch in the UK. In the UK, this is currently King Charles III. If someone joins the order of St. Michael and St. George, then they will be appointed by the Foreign, Commonwealth and Development Office. In other countries, knighthoods can be appointed by the monarch or even the heads of religion. What is the procedure for knighting someone? You may have seen someone being knighted. Usually, a sword is put on both of their shoulders, one by one as they kneel in front of the monarch. This is called the accolade and putting the sword on each shoulder is called dubbing. But this isn't the case for everyone who receives a knighthood. If you're a member of the clergy, you have a role in a religion. Then, the sword is not used because it is believed to be inappropriate. If you are a woman receiving a damehood, the female version of a knighthood, then you also won't go through the accolade. While the monarch usually performs this procedure, another member of the royal family can also do it for them. What privileges do knights have? So, you're now a knight. What does this mean? Well, you can put sir before your name if you're a man and dame if you're a woman. As long as you're a British citizen, if you're not, then you can add KBE after your name. Or, if you've joined the Order of the Garter or the Order of the Thistle, you can put Lady before your name if you're a woman. Each order has a special or home chapel where members can hold their weddings, baptisms and memorial services. You also get a lot of prestige and credibility from having a knighthood or damehood as you've been honoured by the monarch of the UK. And that's a pretty big deal. Why do we still need knights in the UK? It might sound like knights have become a bit disappointing in recent times. They don't usually ride horses in full plate armour into battle and don't seem much like warriors. But knights today have a different purpose than they used to. Knights show us who the best of the best are in the UK. They show us people who have done a lot of work for charity or who have risen to the top of their careers, whether that's science or music. It lets people in the UK show respect to the people who have devoted their lives to improving British culture or serving Britain in war or helping Britain's relationship with other countries. Knights in the UK don't even need to be from the UK. People from other countries can be given honorary knighthoods in the UK for their achievements. Showing that knighthood is a really good way to celebrate what a person has done during their life, no matter where they're from. Top 10 Contemporary Knights Worldwide Now, let's have a look at some of the best knights from the UK and also across the world. Many of these may be familiar faces because it's quite common for celebrities to be knighted, but all of them are important and should be respected. They include Vasily Livanov, this famous Russian actor known for his role as Sherlock Holmes between 1979 and 1986, was given a knighthood in the Order of the British Empire in 2006 for service to the theatre and performing arts. Sean Connery, the first actor to be the iconic James Bond on screen. 
This Scottish actor, who sadly passed away in 2020, received a knighthood in the Order of the British Empire in 2000 for services to film drama. Clint Eastwood, an icon of Western films. This American actor was made a commander in the French Légion d'Honneur, Legion of Honor for his lifetime of acting work and embodying the best of Hollywood. Paul McCartney, best known for being a member of the Beatles, a band who were groundbreaking for British rock and roll. This English musician received a knighthood in the Order of the British Empire in 1997 for services to music. Angelina Jolie This American actor was given an honorary damehood because she isn't a British citizen in the Order of St. Michael and St. George in 2014 for her humanitarian work for women's rights, especially in war zones. Steven Spielberg, perhaps one of the most famous American directors of all time. With amazing films such as Jaws and Jurassic Park, Steven Spielberg received an honorary knighthood in the Order of the British Empire in 2001 for services to the British film industry. Lewis Hamilton, a racing driver who has won Formula One seven times. Lewis Hamilton received a knighthood in the Order of the British Empire in 2008 for services to motor racing. Mary Berry, beloved British TV icon who has appeared on many cooking shows and has published over 75 cookbooks, receiving a damehood in the Order of the British Empire in 2020 for services to broadcasting, the culinary arts and charity. David Attenborough, perhaps one of the most famous faces in British nature documentaries. David Attenborough is a devoted advocate of environmental issues and received a knighthood in the Order of St. George and St. Michael in 2020 for services to television, broadcasting and to conservation. Nils Olav III Lastly, we have a very special knight, a penguin. Nils Olav III is a king penguin who got his special Norwegian titles from the first Nils Olav in 1972, a penguin who became a mascot for a Norwegian king's guard regiment. Nils Olav II was given a knighthood in 2008 by King Harald V and was described as in every way qualified to receive the honour and dignity of a knighthood. What is the mission of a contemporary knight? There is clearly no one way to be a knight in modern times. You can't just jump on a horse, put on your armour and ride to war. Instead, you have to find what you're talented at and think of how it could help others. Film stars and directors provide entertainment to the world and activists try to make life better for other people. Knights and dames inspire people to be better versions of themselves and act as role models for others. So really, we should all aim to be just like knights in the UK. It's not so different from the chivalry in the Middle Ages. Knights show us real life heroes who live their lives as well as they possibly can. So, we can learn from them and improve our own lives too.